Well, hello, my friends. Welcome back to End All Wars. In the last episode, the Turks have finally joined us, guys. They've made the right choice, and now we need to use them uh, to, of course, try and target the enemy as much as possible. It looks like here in Palestine there's not much to do, although we have this fellow right here. Uh, it looks like Brinci Ferek Mustafa Fevji Pasha. That's a lot to say. Uh, we're going to bring him to El Arik, and I'm actually going to see if I can go ahead and transport him by train. Pretty sure I can. 26 days. That's not horrific, but it's still pretty bad. Um, 26 days is a long, long time. And for these guys, I think I'm going to transfer them up to the Russian front. There's a lot going on here. I want to be part of the action, so let's go ahead and transport these guys there. 32 days for one of them. Probably a similar amount of time for the other. And with the smaller armies, we're just going to cut through the enemy area. Now you can see this is taking a long time because this is a very mountainous region um, and even with uh, this guy uh, Brinci Pasha who's basically leading a large force here we really need to go ahead and probably build a depot first. I'm thinking that he's not going to be able to survive here. His men already have pretty low, um, well not pr not extremely low but somewhat low, um, what's that damn word again? Oh my goodness, I can't remember the name of the term, but essentially when that's low, you know that the army is not in the best fighting f shape. So I'm going to see if we can build a depot. If there's already a depot here, which there might be, then I will go ahead and move to the front. Um, let's get over here. And that'll take us 49 days, and we definitely don't have enough trains to bring the rest. And we'll also take the, cor the, for the forces of Ferik Basha and put him in the same area if we can. There we go. Um, 49 days. I don't know why that other region can't be past this area that's a little weird um this turn let's see what we can do all right so we actually have a few units here on the border of bulgaria i like that we really want to get the bulgarians on our side uh but who knows what's going to happen so in this case i am going to send this army i think it's time to send them to the south uh let's help out our friends in palestine and sorry guys i'm trying to navigate with just the arrow keys which is not the greatest way to navigate this game so we're actually going to send them to jaffa uh, 228 days we're gonna have to eventually change that because right now the two fronts are so far or far apart from one another that you can't exactly have anybody arrive there in uh, under half a year <laughs> i mean that's unbelievable that's a long long time uh, this guy's gonna take 128 days of course we will be changing this we'll increase the rail pool we'll do a few things like that to uh, increase uh, the chances of of course getting uh, these units on our side uh, getting them to our side i should say on the border um, so I think that's pretty good for the Turks. Now let's go to the Western Front. And man, this is everybody's favorite front. We've actually done really well. We've broken through, as you can see over here, to numerous locations that uh, otherwise we wouldn't have broken through to. Uh, we're going to put Von Pruben here. And actually Von Pruben can build a depot in this area. So that's going to be his main job, is to build a depot in this area, um, Saint Michel, that we just took, and try to basically hold out. Um, I don't think he needs to actually level up in terms of a commander. Um, as you can see here, we are already part of an HQ. Army can be redeployed. Click on the map to choose the redeployment region. No, we don't want to redeploy our armies. We do want to protect these areas, though. I want to make sure that that's a 50% penalty. That's an awful, awful penalty to have. Um, so we're going to have to fix this. That's a 50% penalty. I think we're going to have to go ahead and fix this army big time. So let's go ahead and separate another general here. And this is all part of the game, is obviously trying to sort of create new armies, and now he's already got too many men, and we still have a 50% penalty. Man, we must have a massive force here. Let's put out the two-star general, and the problem here is this is not the greatest uh, way to set up this situation. All right, I'm actually going to take this general here. He's done pretty good in the past. 47% penalty It's a little better. Give him some more. Give him some more. We're going to use all these forces to hold this area. Um, I think that's going to be the most important thing. 30%, that's more realistic. We can live with that. It's still not good. Um, and we'll actually send some units over here to lower even more uh, to 19%. That's much more uh, realistic and better for us. Our, it's still 30%. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Once again, um, now we're still besieging this area, so I'm staying here. I'm not going to move from this place. I think the rest of our guys are doing just fine. Uh, we obviously have an army here in Luxembourg. Uh, Luxembourg City trying to, I believe, take the city. Uh, yes, absolutely. So we do want to definitely attack Luxembourg, but we want to be careful doing it as well. Um, this has to be a well-organized struggle, as it were. And here we go, guys. So some of these armies are way low on men. Of course, our main army commander, Von Kluck, is still doing great. He had that great victory over the British. 
Um, and now, obviously, we, we control Genth, which is great. However, I do want to get Carl von Bülow the hell out of here. He has not had a good time in this area, and it makes sense uh, that he hasn't had a good time. So we're going to try to have a passive posture and just get the hell out of here. Um, as for the rest of these guys back here, we could start forming some more armies here. Um, so we've got an army under Remus von Wojfich. I don't know why it's not showing his uh, portrait, but we can send him into uh, Belgium as well. 28 days, and I'm hoping that we have a separate rail pool for these units. Yes, we do. Awesome. So nine or eight days, actually. The rest of these guys we're going to keep on the front. Uh, we'll try to, of course, bring them some, re some reinforcements, some replacements, but that all depends on their building skill. You can go ahead and see if they need to build. Nope, they don't need to build anything there. What about over here? Any supply depots? Anything would help at this point, but I think they're good. Uh, and they just need to wait for the ultimate victory. Yeah, victory. Try again. Now let's go over here to the Prussian front, as I like to call it. And over here we've decided to pretty much continue to attack uh, into the enemy territory, retake some of our uh, areas like Gumbinen, uh, because the enemy here, it's not necessarily weak, but we can't just remain on the defensive, although we have to retreat back to our cities every now and again uh, to sort of uh, recuperate our forces. As you can see, some of our generals are already trying to get out of here. It's exactly what we want. So we want to grab this general. We want to grab this general, get them the hell out. Uh, but this general actually is doing okay in Krakow. So I'm actually going to go ahead and send him forward on an attack here to try and retake some of this territory so that we can uh, essentially get the rail pool closer to our men. And if we find any armies on the way, well, I think we can do a pretty good job at defeating them. We've also got this beautiful army over here um, under um, von Hochendorf. And I'm thinking of actually sending him over here to merge with these guys. It's going to take 44 days, but I think if we use the rail pool, which we don't have, uh, just too many people on trains right now, we could have gotten there faster. Nonetheless, I'll take it for now at least. Uh, and I do want to get over here to Jemun, our fort, once again. And why can't we just... There we go. Uh, we can also build a depot. Why not? Send the rest of our forces into Serbia. We've already sent quite a few, um, and we've taken a few cities here, but overall our Serbian front has to improve. I was hoping our Turkish friends could help us with that, but to do that, they're going to have to get on transport ships. It's going to be complicated. It, I don't think it's going to be worth it, but we do have to go and immediately check um, this panel because we really want to try, guys, to get one of these superpowers on our side. So we can see this guy's 81%. What?! America is 81% for the Central Powers? This is hilarious. Oh my god, yes, we're going to send a diplomat. Look at this, guys. We could possibly get the Americans to join us. That would be unbelievable. So uh, that's one of the things I love about this game, just all the weird stuff that can occur. Uh, I think we should also go ahead and use Max Hoffman. Actually, I think we can wait a few turns before we use him. Let's take a look at the other things we can do here, if we have any decisions. So I think just about everything is locked at this point. All right, that's unfortunate. We'll take a look at the casualties at the end, so don't get excited. Um, I'm also going to try to uh, skip the sort of boring part, guys, of having to wait for the end of the turn. So um, we'll stop, essentially, when that occurs, and we'll come back when the next turn, the enemy turn, essentially starts. I'm um, thinking also that the Army Corps here against Ka with Carl might be able to go on an offensive if he can do it quickly and take this area, or at least try to destabilize the enemy. Doesn't look like he can go into an attack posture, though, but... Maybe we can get the enemy to attack us. Actually, in that case, let's let's keep him here. All right, guys, we're ending the turn. Wish us the best of luck. Okay, guys, here we are, and we're obviously back at the uh, actual stage of the turn resolution. I'm still waiting for some armies to go ahead and get into a fight. Uh, I don't like this menu being here, and this has been happening a few times, so might have to reach out to the devs here and see if I can get rid of that. There we go, finally, and we've got another battle against the um, the Serbs at the Battle of Montenegro. We lost 2,460 men, but we managed to actually get a victory. That's absolutely awesome. Uh, we're done on day three here, and as you can see, we're taking some of these uh, some of these Russian areas. Uh, of course, the Russians are still streaming into Austria, and there's not too much we can do about that. Um, you know, obviously, we're going to try to put pressure on them with the Turks, and I'm hoping that that's going to be enough to relieve this Austrian front, because they're definitely going to have to send men to stop the Turks, unless they want to lose all their provinces. And obviously, if the USA was able to get on the war... That would be amazing. Um, I don't know how they would get to us. I think we'd have to take Belgium, and even then, it would be extremely dangerous because they'd have to get through the, the English Channel, 
um, to be able to get to us, and I think the French and the British would probably blow the hell out of them. So let's see how they can help us. Who knows? Maybe they can send us supplies. Maybe they can get in through another route, maybe even through Turkey, um, and move up, move up. But that would be a really interesting alternative history uh, situation. Let's put it that way. All right, we're at turn four this uh, this particular game without having any battle so far. That's pretty crazy for us. We usually have a battle at this point, and we certainly will here because the Russians are streaming in. We've got one defender, so I think they're going to try to wipe him out. Or maybe their goal is to just continuously move forward. Nope, there we go. That's the attack. And, of course, we lost. Um, the enemy lost way more men than we did, but they have nearly 244,000 men. So we need to get that Austrian force that we had in the south before. It's In fact, it's this one right here. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, the Budapest army, we need to get them merged with a bigger army. And essentially, we need to stop these Russians. Because right now, they're, they're getting into Austria-Hungary very easily. Uh, but this is another reason why I'm attacking with the Germans in the northeastern part of, uh, of uh, Russia. And essentially, well, the northwestern part, but right there on the border uh, with, uh, with East Prussia, of course. We're trying to get into Russia as quickly as possible. And uh, if we can keep doing that, maybe we can eventually cut these guys off anyway. But only time will tell. So there we go. Day five, still no battles. And I know the Turks are probably not going to have a battle yet because it takes them so long to get to the front with the rudimentary uh, rail system that they have. Of course, that greatly improved under the uh, the Ataturks, so we'll have to see what happens there. So, German defeat at Kolo. Oh, no, this is in Russia. We actually lost a lot of men in that battle. We can't be losing more men than the enemy. So far, the enemy's uh, deaths are much higher than ours, but we need to keep it that way because this war is also about numbers. Um, and the thought process behind a lot of generals in World War I was if we lose 10,000 men and the enemy loses 10,001, we win. It's really, that's the thought process. So we need to be very, very careful here with uh, keeping our numbers up and increasing our kills on the enemy when we have a chance. Fortunately, I think this general may be captured. Uh, he put up a good fight, but not good enough and obviously lost almost all of his men. <clears throat> Over here, it looks like the Russians might be stopping a bit and we finally had our battle in Mombasa Kenya unfortunately we lost against the Japanese what the hell and now it's a German defeat and this is the hilarious part guys um, we lost no men it's still a defeat unfortunately for us because we probably just don't have enough men to storm the city but we killed 6,000 Japanese and lost no men at all um, or at least the commander is Japanese these are all Kenyan brigades uh, English brigades Royal Africa Corps very strange battle there but I love strange battles. So there we go. And uh, should have been a victory for us, but I guess our men just conceded that they couldn't take the city. Uh, and uh, hopefully we can go back and keep hitting Kenya because taking one of these uh, colonial areas would be very profitable to us. Okay, Ravia, Rarka, Busk. These don't sound like Austro-Hungarian names, so I'm not too concerned. Maybe I should be. Of course, all of Galician is Austro-Hungary. Um, Austro-Hungary. So they've taken a nice portion here. And hopefully that general can finally break through the capital of Belgium. I believe it's... Uh, is it Brussels? I believe it is. Um, could be Antwerp. We're going to have to see because I think it's actually changed. And once you take the capital, the capital will switch to another part of the, con uh, the country. It doesn't always happen with countries, but with some it does. And, you know, it looks like they're definitely consolidating their forces here. They might finally be ready to put a little pause on their attack because right now they have so many men. We've got to do something about it. Even if it means sacrificing a few armies, I think it's going to be better than just waiting and letting them take everything. These are definitely the true Huns right now. Um, they're just absolutely rampaging our lands. We really need to take Belgium as well because then we can begin our attack on France and we can put a serious hurting on the British Expeditionary Corps. Now let's hope that everything stays quiet on the Western Front so our men have a chance to recuperate and build those depots. Of course, at this point, the French have probably raised enough men to defend the areas we wanted to attack once again. And that's the nature of this kind of warfare. You take a few miles every week or every, every few weeks or maybe every month um, and then you just hold. That's really all you can do. And of course, there's a lot of back and forth, but... Generally, that's that's sufficient to to be to, to know how to ex essentially uh, face this kind of warfare. It would be really cool. Also, we got those Americans at 88 percent. If we could get them to actually join us, I can't wait to see if that can occur. Uh, that would be absolutely amazing. 
All right, here we go. Be careful, men. The French are moving on us. We have to be very careful. Right, day 11. This is progressing quickly, and we still haven't taken, and it is Antwerp, sorry. Um, we need to take Antwerp, and we're still not taking it. I mean, this guy has been besieging this city for at least four months, and uh, we still haven't broken through. So hopefully Antwerp will soon fall. That would be a great victory, and I think it would get a victory for us over Belgium once and for all. They would surrender their armies. We wouldn't have to deal with them, and we could start working our way into northern France, which I think would be absolutely epic. We would also show the world that we are on the path to victory. Of course, as for the Austro-Hungarians, I'm not sure what, what's going to happen there. We might need to send some relief columns, relief armies to help them, but with their the state of their country not having railways everywhere, they have a few, but it's going to make it really hard to get in there and help them. So I think it's really up to them to help their own country. War as hell. And here we go. Maybe we will get a fight uh, with our Turkish soldiers. The Turks have joined us. If the Americans join us, there's a chance that the Kaiser will be ruler of all of Europe, my friends. All right. It also looks like our, our our main general is holding out pretty well too. You know, we might be uh, having some French get off the train here. This would be perfect for us. But so far, no contacts there. It's one more day for possible contacts. Hindenburg might get a battle. There we go. I told you guys, Hindenburg got a battle, and it's a German victory. 9,000 Russians dead. We only lost 2,000. Right now, Paul von Hindenburg is the best, uh, honestly, our best commander so far. 9,000 Russians. And we also took back uh, one of our provinces, so we need to keep fighting. These provinces are obviously uh, Ostprus, very much uh, more in favor of Germany than they are in, of, in, in favor of Russia. So I think they're going to do everything they can to get on our good side. And there we go, guys. That's the end of that turn. Now, what I really want to see is I want to see the diplomatic phase here. Let's see how the Americans are doing. 80%. So the Entente is pushing. I don't like that. Let's see if there's anything we can do here. Maybe send in another politician. So we're going to send another diplomat here to the United States and hopefully get them on our side. It would just be amazing to have the Americans on our side. Although, while this is happening, we're neglecting our Bulgarian friends. And they're kind of uncertain. They're, they're more in favor of us, but not by much. So we need to put a lot more uh, pressure into this particular relationship. Sounds like a bad date, but it's just the way it has to be, guys. Uh, so munitions factory, I'm definitely going to start building one here in Belgium. Uh, I think it's a good idea. And this will also bring uh, weapons to our men a lot faster. Uh, I think we can also drop a munitions factory back here if we can hold the area. I'm hoping we will. And I'm also going to try to get some recruits, guys. I think that's going to be very important here. So let's get some... These are Turkish recruits. I don't think we need Turkish recruits. We need German recruits and Austro-Hungarian recruits. Right now we're getting a few German recruits, but I think Austro-Hungary is really in need of recruits. So let's get them some line infantry. We'll get them some light infantry. We need to do everything we can to help out the Austrians without expending all of our money at once um, and all of our manpower. But I think that'll work for now. So that's that's as much as we can do. Sorry, Austria. Uh, but hopefully we can do something to help you in the next turn. We will, of course, do our tradition and take a look at the casualties here. We have 713,000 men dead. Uh, however, we have 
nearly 40,000 French prisoners, nearly 2,000 Russian prisoners. The Western Entente, these are the French, the Belgians, the British, all mixed up, 546,000 losses, and the Eastern Entente, 325,900 losses. Uh, we're still doing better in terms of casualties, but of course, we're fighting a multitude of nations, so we need to start getting some support, and maybe next turn, we need to start doing some attacks. So I'm going to let you guys decide. It looks like some of these units are not doing so well. In fact, I'm going to move Von Zeilander over here to defend this area in uh, Van Moselle. And you can see that it's actually hard for him to get there. Since there are no trains there, this place is pretty crowded. Oh, wait, we can get some trains. Beautiful. It's still 31 days, so yeah, it's very crowded over here. We might need to an, an attempt an attack to relieve uh, the pressure here. And uh, maybe also take eyes in these areas, cut off some, some uh, French. And in fact, there's a French general right here in uh, the Verdun Forest. We can try to wipe, or excuse me, the Ardennes Forest can try to wipe him out uh, with one of our other generals, like uh, Von Bonn. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to see if we can't do an actual attack, an assault, with no retreat, for the glory of the Kaiser. But I hope you guys are enjoying the game so far. Uh, thanks again for watching. Make sure to support it wherever you can. And we're still pillaging Antwerp, but hopefully they will fall very, very soon. All right, guys, thank you so much. Take care and have a great, great day.